Hey guys, happy Thursday. Three Things Thursday is here again. Um, we've had a really busy week so far. Sorry if you can hear my puppy. She has like one of those playground balls that she bit a hole in, so she just likes to carry it around and chew on it. Um, so if you hear that, if you're hearing weird noises, it's just puppers. It's just Ripley. Um, we've had a busy week. Kids went back to school yesterday. Um, while I'm not ready for summer to be over, I am ready for some routine. It was a it was a busy working summer. So it is nice to kind of get back into routine and to get them back, back with other kids, um, back to doing things that aren't YouTube. Can I be the first to admit that my kids watch a ridiculous amount of YouTube? Are you with me? Is it just me? Am I just the bad parent? I don't think so. I think, yeah, I'll bet all your kids are watching a little bit of YouTube this summer too. Okay. So let's dig in to three things that I'd like to share with you this week. So many of you are using, your, if you're watching this on Instagram, um, many of you are using Instagram to help build an audience, to build your business, um, to get, make, you know, to, um, I don't have words today, uh, brand awareness, to build your brand, expand your audience, and then ultimately to sell your product or your service, right? So one of the problems with using social media is the using it part. Um, if you're like me, when you go in to, to post, you might get sucked in, you might, it, it, can, it can be a time suck, right? Um, so one way that I combat this is I often do not create my posts directly in the app. Um, so I use an app and a service um, called Plan That, P-L-A-N-N, -N, That. Um, I also tried Planoly right off the bat, um, but I think I just like the layout of Plan That better. Um, the app is called Plan, P-L-A-N-N, -N, but the website is planthat.com. Um, so you can do a free service. I think I pay 10 bucks a month because um, that gives you additional insights. So it's a really great way to, especially if you're like me and you work from a desktop, um, that you can upload your photo, you can edit your photo right there on the site. Um, you can create the content for your post and it actually, that's how I get page breaks or um, little paragraph breaks. So if you see somebody's Instagram and they have all these beautiful breaks and it's easier to read. I don't like the big clumps of text that you, and you can't put those hard breaks in on the Instagram app. Um, so plan that actually puts those in there. You can upload your emojis in there. You can save hashtag lists. You can do hashtag research. Um, and then you can get insights on your posts and what kind of things your audience likes best and, and what is converting and what isn't and what gets you the most traction because running a business is hard. If anyone tells you it's not, run away from that person. Running a business is hard. It's tedious and there's a lot of little details that can slip through the cracks. And so using apps like this God, just help make it easier. Um, and, and being able to do more of what works and less of what doesn't because you don't have more than 24 hours in a day. Um, and I'm not a big fan of the hustle, the like stay up till three, get up at five, like you'll sleep when you're dead. No, I want you to have a quality of life <clears throat> while you build your business. Um, so you'll never hear me, uh, why is that hair sticking up? You're never going to hear me, I'm never going to push you to hustle, to burn the candle at both ends because I don't think it's wise. There's plenty of people out there who are going to push you to do that. If that's your cup of tea, awesome. Not me. No, I value rest and I value efficiency. So using apps like Plan That help us be a little bit more efficient in how we spend our time on social media, um, allowing it to be the tool versus the time suck. Doesn't mean I don't still get sucked in. I love Instagram. Number two thing I want to share with you <clears throat> is that there are some pretty decent savings account rates out there if you are willing to go online and open accounts that are outside of your community. Um, I always advise people to have an emergency fund. Um, 
if your emergency fund is your three to six month, so your bigger emergencies, I like to keep a little bit of money at my local bank. Um, so I have a small savings account. We bank with Chase. I have a small savings account with Chase. Their interest rates, awful. Absolutely abysmal. Shame on you, Chase, by the way, as one of the biggest banks in the world. Your savings rates suck, like really bad. Um, but I do like having, so if I need that quick access, um, if we need you know, to pay somebody in cash pretty quickly, or we need to make a quick transfer that's immediate, um, I do like to keep a small amount at my local bank. But for our bigger emergency fund, the thing that we really, like if there's an emergency of that magnitude where we're needing to pull out three months of expenses, um, we probably have a few days for it to transfer to our account. So I like, um, I like Ally Bank. Um, their savings rate right now, they just lowered it since the Fed lowered rates. It's now 1.9%. Uh, but I was just looking online. I like to use bankrate.com to just compare, not just rates, but because some, some banks will pay you, uh, I think the highest right now is 2.55%. And that was it. I think it was called Popular Bank. I've never heard of it. <clears throat> so there are higher interest rates out there, but you must keep a higher balance. So the highest rate I saw was 2.55 for a $10,000 minimum balance. Um, but there were three really decent rates for a zero balance. So no minimums at all. You can get 2.36% at City, and you can get 2.1% at Barclays. And then, like I said, I'm getting 1.9% at Ally. That's just where they were paying really much much better rates, um, and some other banks are beating them now, but that's where our account is set up and I'm just not in the mood to move it for a, a, few, a few points. So anyway, bankrate.com is a great place if you, if you want to see what are the minimum balances and that I need to carry to get these higher rates. Um, if you've got more in your savings account then you necessarily like need to have access to like if you how do I want to word this if you could wait a couple days to pull from the savings account it just transfers to your checking but it takes about 48 hours um, so if you've got that kind of time whatever amount you're comfortable with I would recommend moving it away from your local banks or even your big giant banks that are paying really crappy interest chase um, and I would move it to one of these higher rates. Um, it, you're, if you're going to have money in savings, at least earn interest. Don't give your money to the banks for 0.01%, 0.1%, half a percent. Don't let them have your money. Like you need to be competitive. The banks are shopping for your cash. Um, so if you're gonna lend it to them, get a better interest rate. So bankrate.com will tell you that. And the last thing I want to talk about, this one's going to take a little bit more time, so hang with me. <clears throat> There's a lot of talk about recession right now. All the major media outlets are running stories about, are we going into a recession? Is a recession coming? When is it coming? Why is it coming? Um, and some of those headlines are pretty scary because most of you went through the Great Recession and it was ugly. Um, a lot of people lost jobs. A lot of people lost homes. Um, the The country hasn't. I know the economy is t just chugging along, but there we're still we still have some scars from the last recession we went through. Um, we got banged up pretty bad. So what? Before we get sucked into all these scary headlines and we start pulling our money out of the stock market and we panic, let's talk about what is a recession. So a recession is um, when gross domestic product, GDP, shrinks for two consecutive quarters or about six months. Um, we haven't had that happen for one quarter yet. So, and that's all of our gross domestic products. So I want you to remember that even in a recession, and it does affect multiple industries, um, that some industries will fare better than others. So a recession is just two consecutive quarters where we have negative GDP. It's just a shrinkage, that's it. That's what a recession is. Not all recessions are like that last one that we just went through. And some of them can ultimately turn into depressions. 
will there be a recession? Are we heading into one? And the simple answer is, yeah, there's going to be another one. These are economic cycles. We go up, we go down. We go up, we go down. That's it's just the cycle of business, and it's how the economic engine kind of runs. If you want to learn more about, if you really want to geek out on economics and you want to dig into why these things happen and what these patterns are, and, and there are long-term debt cycles and short-term debt cycles, and if that sounds like something that's really interesting for you, I would recommend checking out Ray Dalio from Bridgewater Capital. He uh, puts out a lot of really um, in-depth, long-form pieces on just that, macroeconomics, um, big picture, and just really helps you understand what a lot of these terms mean um, and how to be less afraid um, so that you kind of understand, hey Ty, how's it going? So will there be another recession? Yeah, there's gonna be. When will it happen? Well, if I knew when that next recession was coming, I probably wouldn't be doing an Instagram Live, and I probably wouldn't be building a business, and I would probably be drinking Mai Tais on a beach somewhere. I don't know when the next recession is coming. I don't think it's coming in the next couple months. Um, it could be two years from now. It could be 12 months from now, it could be five years. Nobody knows. There are a few unicorns out there who have an idea of when it's gonna happen. Um, for the other eight billion of us, we don't know. So what can you do? Because there is going to be another recession. We don't know when it's going to be. I know there's a lot of um, economic indicators that are saying, hey, do you hear, is she, can you hear the puppy? She's tearing up this ball. Um, there's a lot of things flashing red, um, and some of the stuff that I keep up with tells me that I think we'll be in a recession within the next, I would say, 12 to 24 months. Don't, don't take that to the bank, though. I, have, I don't know. I just feel like it could happen. Um, and there's a lot of economists who feel that way, too. So what can you do? Here's what you can do you can start paying off your debt as best as you can. Maybe you can't get completely out of debt in the next 12 to 24 months, but you can work on it. You can build emergency savings. Um, you can learn how to budget. You can learn, and by budget I just mean telling your money where to go ahead of time. Um, you can spend less than you make. You can pick up some financial books and read about them. You can get really, really familiar with your spending habits. Um, meaning that, like, start with tracking them for 30 days and see where your money goes when you don't tell it where to go. Don't change anything. Just see where it goes. Recessions hit the nation, but they don't necessarily have to negatively impact your house. Um, so pay attention, but don't be consumed by the news because all those people... Like I just said, I think we'll be in a recession in the next 12 to 24 months. Yeah, they're just guessing. Because they're not unicorns. They're not the Warren Buffetts of the world. They, like, if we could time the market, we would. But we can't. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave all my money where it's at. Uh, I'm going to continue to invest in... Uh, index funds. That's the simplest thing for me to do because I'm a busy mom um, who doesn't have time to read uh, business portfolios and, and all of the financial sheets and the balance, all the, the stuff that businesses put out that help you decide whether or not you want to buy that stock. I don't have time for it. I just invest in index funds. Um, I'm going to leave my money there. The next recession is going to punch me and then we'll come out the other side because that's how the economic engine works. So I don't want you to panic when you keep seeing these headlines and think that you need to pull all of your retirement out. Um, if you are approaching retirement age, I advise you to be speaking with somebody, um, a, a, a fiduciary um, who has a responsibility to you and not to the bank behind them that just wants to sell you funds, but get a fiduciary um, and if you, even if you're young and you're not at retirement age, but if you're really uncertain, 
don't listen to people on Instagram. Go get a fiduciary and talk to them um, about your specifics, what you're planning with your life and your money. Um, don't, don't just take advice from people on the internet. Uh, don't keep reading the headlines and get scared. Like, strengthen up your money habits now because when the next one hits, and it will, some people are gonna lose jobs. Could be a lot of people, could be, you know, it could be really bad, or it could be a, a six to nine month recession. I, it's really hard to tell. There's a lot of variables to look at. So I know the headlines are big and scary, but there's a lot of things that you're in control of. And I will tell you, there were a lot of families that lost a lot in the last recession, and there were a lot that didn't. Um, I mean, yeah, our 401ks, our, our portfolios went down, but they're back up now. So that money wasn't real unless you cashed out. Um, I just don't want you to panic because when we operate from a place of fear, we make bad choices. So if you want to learn more, check out what Ray Dalio talks about um, because he's looking at bigger picture things um, and he doesn't use fear tactics to try and he's not selling anything. That's the other part I love is that there's no course at the end. Um, there's no investment group. There's no, you're going to get rich and I can show you how. It's just, he just writes about macroeconomics. It's really boring stuff. But that's usually reality. The, the real thing that's happening is, is often pretty boring. Um, those big flashy headlines are just to get you scared and keep tuning in to find out what's next. Um, so that's what I have for you today. Um, plan that. Planally are great apps to use if you want to... Uh, build your following on Instagram and you want to do it in a way that allows you a little more flexibility with your time. Bankrate.com is a great place for savings rates. I am currently banking with Ally Bank, but it does look like City and Barclays are offering a little bit higher rates with no minimum balances. So that's pretty cool. And then recession. There will be one. We don't know when. And you can start today by just getting better with your money. So that if you happen to be in the industry that's affected and you have to find a new job or something negative happens, at least you'll have a little bit of preparation for it. Um, Cause like I said, we don't know when it's gonna come. We don't know how bad it's gonna be and we don't know what the effects will be. So turn off the news, quit letting the experts scare you um, and just if you really want to insulate yourself a bit go learn pick up some books read about it um, and Ray Dalio is a great source he's one of my favorites so she loves this ball I don't know if you guys can hear it or not but she loves it so that's my three things Thursday today um, thanks for tuning in and I will see you guys next week take care love you